The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Jesus says, judge not, that you be not judged. In other words, don't be hypercritical, because if you are, people are going to People are going to be critical of you. And by the way, when God says, judge not, he's not saying don't discern right from wrong. Because the Bible teaches that we need to do that. He's not saying don't call sin, sin. He's saying, he's saying don't be hypercritical. He's saying don't judge people's motives. And don't make a final judgment as to the destiny of someone's soul, because you don't know these things. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't judge right from wrong. A lot of Christians think, well, I'm not the judge. You know, my pastor teaches that homosexuality is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And my church ordains openly practicing homosexuals, and, and I don't want to judge. Well, that's not judging. That's giving out the word of God. That's declaring what the judge has already said. We are to do that. Verse 2, For with the judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. In other words, treat, people will treat you the way you treat them. Verse 3, And why do you behold the mote that is in your brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in your own eye. I mean, you see the problems in others, but you don't see the big problems that you have. You nitpick when it comes to other people and their flaws, and here you're, you're loaded with huge flaws, and, and you don't even see them. Four, or how will you say to your brother, let me pull the mote out of your own eye, or out of your eye, and behold, a beam is in your own eye. How are you going to fix others spiritually if you're a spiritual mess? Verse 5, you hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of your own eye, and then you shall see clearly to cast out the mote out of your brother's eye. You can't give others what you don't have yourself. So get right with Jesus, and then God can use you to help others get right with Jesus. 6, give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast you your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. If you give out the truth to somebody and they despise it, they understand it. I'm not talking about people who don't understand it. I'm talking about people who know what you're saying, but they mock the truth. They ridicule the truth. Don't keep giving it to them because you are allowing them to blaspheme God and to trample a holy thing, which is his truth, under their feet. Don't give them that opportunity. Seven, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. In other words, read the word of God, pray according to the word of God, persevere in prayer, and God will give you what is best, what is according to his will, what is according to his word, when he wants to do it. Verse 8, for everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it shall be opened. We have to persevere in our prayers. Ask, seek, and knock. Keep at it. Persevere. Verse 9, or what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them who ask him? God will give you what you need. God will give you what is best for you when you need it. Now, there are certain things that we ask for, just like a little child asks for things from, from their parents, and a little child thinks it's the best thing in the world for them, but it's the worst thing in the world for them. They're just not smart enough to figure that out. We sometimes are that way in our prayers toward God. But God will give you what you need 
He will give you what is best. So pray according to Scripture, because there you're likely to find, more often, things that he will say yes to. Twelve, therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Treat others the way you would want to be treated if you were in their place. Thirteen, enter you at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. In other words, most people will go to hell, and the, the road to hell is wide. In fact, there are many roads that take you to hell, many false doctrines, many false religions, many unbiblical beliefs will lead a person to hell. But notice 14, But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads to life. And few there be that find it. Most people will go to hell. Because there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ, the Savior. It's by repenting and receiving him as Lord and Savior. And those who refuse to do it and take one of the other millions of ways that they think will lead them to heaven will end up in hell. 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So they come to you dressed like a shepherd, acting so pious, but they'll rip your soul to pieces if you give them a chance. Beware of them. 16. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So, you will know them by their fruit. Does what they say line up with the Holy Word of God? Rightly divided. Does what they teach line up with the simple, plain truths the orthodox teaching of Christian, that's Christianity, which has been around for 2,000 years. If it goes against Scripture, they're producing bad fruit. And you need to reject them. They're false prophets. Let the Word of God be the deciding factor when you judge someone as to whether they're a false prophet or a true man of God. Verse 19. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. In other words, you teach false doctrine, you live unbiblically, you live in sin, you don't repent, you're going to be cast into the fire. And that's talking about the fires of hell. 20. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. How they live, what they teach, will determine whether they're from God or not. Always let the Bible be your measuring rod. <clears throat> 21. Not everyone who says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven. There's a lot of professing Christians who don't live the word of God and don't care that they don't live the word of God. Um, they're cultural Christians. They were brought up in the church, perhaps some of them, but they claim to be Christians and they call Jesus Lord, but they don't live like he is their Lord. They're not saved. They're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Proof, proof of that, verse 22, Jesus says, many will say to me in that day, judgment day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name have cast out devils and in your name done many wonderful works? We were so religious, Jesus. They're going to say on Judgment Day, we did so many things for you in your name. We did a lot of religious busy work. 23, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. It's a lot easier to do religious works than it is to produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is love and joy and peace and kindness and goodness and meekness and faithfulness and self-control. It is a lot easier 
to do religious busy work than it is to live holy. And so these people are shocked because they did so much religious type religion religious type works. And they're shocked on the day of judgment because Jesus is going to tell them to go to hell. Why? Because they didn't know him. They didn't have a personal relationship with him. They never really repented and asked him to be their Lord and their Savior and showed that they did that by a love for Jesus. They didn't know him. Salvation is knowing Jesus. It's not just knowing about Jesus. It's not doing things for your church. It's knowing Jesus in a personal way and loving him as a result. A lot of surprised people on Judgment Day, believe me. 24, therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. In other words, if you know Jesus, if he is your Lord and Savior, therefore the Holy Spirit indwells you, and therefore your life is is characterized by obedience to the Word of God, by love for the Word of God, then when the time of judgment comes, you're going to withstand that storm. 26, And everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. People who hear the Word of God and understand the Word of God, but just refuse it, especially the Word of God, which tells us to receive Jesus Christ. You refuse to do that, well, when Judgment Day comes, you're falling. You're going to fall all the way into the lake of fire, and you're never going to get out of there. 28, and it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. They couldn't believe what he was saying. He was so straightforward, you know. That's what 29 is teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. The scribes are always quoting other teachers. Jesus just spoke the plain word of God, and he spoke it in a matter-of-fact way. Like it or don't like it, this is the truth. He spoke the word of God without apology. He spoke it with authority. This is the truth. Whether you believe it or not, this is the truth. And that's the way the word of God needs to be proclaimed today by God's preachers. This is the truth. And don't apologize. Just declare the straightforward word of God. Those who have a heart for God will be drawn to it. Those who do not will not be drawn to it. But, but make the dividing line clear by proclaiming the word of God like Jesus did.